Welcome to another episode of The Marital Mission. I am your co-host, Shamika McDowell. And I am your other co-host, Lido McDowell. And we are The Marital Mission. So welcome to another season of The Marital Mission. This is our third. Yes, we made two years in July. Two years of the actual podcast. Actual podcasting. Yes. I don't think that's all the way correct, but... It's all the way correct. (laughs) Okay, we're going to go with it. So we have a few announcements, but we'll save that for the end. So this episode, we are going to discuss relationship OCD and what that means. Now, you know what relationship OCD is. Do you have an idea of what we're going to be talking about? I have an idea. Okay. So when we say OCD, people automatically think the person who's a germaphobe and they're washing their hands 10 times to 20 times a day trying to get clean and they can't help themselves because they're so obsessed with cleanliness. And the same thing can be true for relationships. So you're ready to get into what that could mean and how it expresses itself and how to identify if you may have it. Yeah, let's do this. All right. So in our, we like to find articles about relationships and I just happened to come across one and it said relationship OCD. And I was like, relationship OCD, that's not, somebody's making something up. It's a new term that we're putting on something uh, related to relationships, but actually it is a clinical diagnosis I mean, somebody still made it up. (laughs) Um, You know, there are terms out there that people just like toxic, toxic masculinity. That's not a clinical thing, at least not right now. But I got you. Yeah, this actually is recognized by science. So just like people can be obsessed with cleanliness or any other thing out there, they can be obsessed with their relationship and how it manifests itself is a person obsessing over why their feelings towards their relationship or to their partner is plagued with fears and doubt. Mm-hmm. I'm with you so far. Okay. Have you yourself been I won't say have relationship OCD, but have you been plagued with fear and doubts? No. No? Never? Not that I can think of. Not even about us? No. No? Nope. Nothing about our relationship? Like maybe this, maybe she's not the one because that's what the fear comes in at. Like maybe this person isn't the one. Maybe this relationship isn't right for me. No. Wow. You? Yeah, but I worry about everything. So. We talking about relationship OCD (laughs) right now. (laughs) I don't think I have relationship OCD because I don't obsess over whether or not. Have you ever? Yes. Okay. Yes. Like, mm, maybe... Maybe this isn't the right uh, relationship at this time. Maybe I'm not the right person. Maybe he's not the right person. But yeah. And not just you. Just I think there is a healthy skepticism that you need to have uh, when dating. I mean, I'm not judging you. I'm not saying that you are. I'm just saying. I got you. I just want you to know that you can speak freely and... I'm not going to take offense to any of this. Julie noted. (laughs) I'm just saying generally, not just me, generally having a, having a discernment about your relationships. Yes, definitely. 
good to assess where you are in a relationship, what type of headspace you're in, the level of commitment that you are receiving and you're putting in. So, yeah, you definitely don't want to just go head first into a relationship and with blinders on. Right. So, but if you do have, they call it R O C D is if you're having senseless worries and doubt whether or not you love your partner despite being happy in your relationship. Self-sabotaging. I think we so, all... That, yeah, that's a good... We all know or have people that we have associated with one time or another and they've shared their relationship concerns with you. Mm-hmm. And as they're speaking... Over the course of time, you just realize that you may be your own worst enemy in your head. Uh, Some of the things that some of the fears or doubts that are real to them Mm -hmm. or to you may seem illogical or not even realistic. It's just kind of like made up. Truth be told... I hear, I have heard a lot of women, they're in their relationships and they're like, he's too nice. And it's like, what? Like, I get too nice as in creepy, but he's treating you nicely and you can't handle it. So they're used to or being accustomed to a certain level of disrespect or a certain level of distance in a relationship. And when the person that they're with ex- doesn't conform to what they're used to. They're like, whoa, what is this? This is too nice. Is he messing up? What's he being too nice for? What's he hiding? So it kind of goes the other way. I mean, men do the same thing. Well, I'll say that I have noticed those same patterns in men. I don't know if it's past hurt or if it's things that they have yet to heal from, but they seemingly make things up to either justify them not doing what they should do Mm -hmm. or to excuse themselves for thinking something about their partner that is not tangible. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So we don't want to just speak off the cuff here. We're going to go through the list of things to look out for, to see if you recognize these traits in yourself. And we're not diagnosing people. We're just saying that there is a term for it. If you do ever do find yourself like going to counseling. Yeah. Ever find yourself obsessing over Things that you have no reason to really question. So here's a list and we'll provide a link in the description box. So be sure to check it out. Intolerance of uncertainty. When an individual experiences OCD, the most common thinking error is the inability to tolerate even a minuscule sign of doubt. So that's like blowing up your fears out of proportion usually people they may think a thing and then it's gone it comes and goes but if you're constantly harping on that thing mm, it might be a trait and polarized thinking when they doubt begin to doubt their love towards their special person they believe their relationship will fail they can't stand the idea of making the wrong decision okay obsessive thinking day in and day out Individuals obsess about whether they love the person. Maybe they make lists and write down the pros and cons. Oof. <laughs> yeah. That was you? Um. Mm, yeah. Yeah. The results are never satisfying. Now, that part. I don't subscribe to that part. Gotcha. They obsess about qualities such as appearance, intelligence, personality, accomplishments, morality, and social skills. I don't think I ever got that deep. Gotcha. It was never that. 
Seeking reassurance. The only way to feel better, at least temporarily, is to find reassurance from friends, family, or themselves. They try to go back and review the past good times to satisfy their doubts. They may begin to feel good about the relationship until the next trigger comes along. Triggers. You might have to do an episode on triggers. Yeah, (laughs) most definitely. Atypical behavior. For instance, people may normally not be jealous, but this feeling creeps into their lives. They may begin to question their loved one's loyalty, fidelity, and love. Their constant questioning leads their loved one to feel irritated. They, in turn, see it as a sign to end the relationship. I think that is a big thing in relationships. Yeah. Especially if... Like I said, things are going too good and you're looking for a reason to end. That's usually the way to do it. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Feeling able to control thoughts. The person may decide that he or she is going to enjoy the loved one and will suppress any disturbing thoughts that will ruin the moment. If a thought regarding a physical feature comes up and the person no longer finds it attractive, they look away and try to suppress the thoughts. Perhaps they notice an quote unquote attractive person walking by and looking away quickly. They don't want to doubt and compare. Unfortunately, the loved one notices this discomfort and may ask what's wrong. The OCD sufferer denies anything is wrong and becomes defensive, which leads to a fight. Trying to control thoughts usually backfires. I think that's another one. Yeah, I can think of some cases. Yeah. Avoidance. The person may try to stay away from situations or people that trigger doubts about the loved one. They may conclude that the best way to decrease the fights is to just stay at home, away from possible triggers. The loved one may question this behavior, and this leads to more disagreements. Hmm. So those are the things to look out for. I think we've all... In, at some level, maybe not at the magnitude to where it's compulsive disorder, but we've experienced some level of, hmm, maybe about this person. Maybe it's not with the person you're currently with. Maybe it's a past relationship, but I think if you're experiencing all of these at the same time on a frequent basis, then it may be time to look at some counseling. These things, I think it's the obsessive part and the compulsive part that really goes together to make it to make it, you know, detrimental to the relationship. No, oh, yeah. We all um, are going to doubt specific things, or we all going to maybe wonder or have fears within a relationship. But as you stated when you have all of these things that are happening over and over and you feel like you have no control over it and Mm -hmm. it's, it's ruining your relationship and it's a spiral where you can't stop it. Now you know that you may need treatment. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is curable from Um, what I read there. Yeah. It's more of a management to where you can get to a place to where it's not affecting your life. Yeah. So and it's just, you know, a form of um, an anxiety if you have a history of that. If you already have a history with OCD, um, it could show up in your relationships. Um, and I mean, it's also for those people who may be in a relationship with someone like that. You may be internalizing or feeling the burden mm-hmm. of maybe living up to these unrealistic unrealistic expectations of the person and nothing that you can do or say will make this person feel better because they have a disorder. That's a good point to bring up the person that's on the receiving end. It's like, it's almost like, okay, it's almost like gaslighting. Like you set up this situation to where, because of your own neurosis and you're projecting onto them and that person is like, comes to you about it and there's no resolution. It's like, well, I haven't even done anything. <laughs> What's going on here? Yeah. So that's a good point to bring up that 
if you yourself are on the receiving end to maybe you need to speak with someone as well to, as well to just to make sure whether it's together or separately just to make sure that you're in a good place emotionally and mentally yeah as always and to be i guess be more transparent with our situation could you share some of the things that you may have suffered with as far as being uh having these symptoms of ROCD mm -hmm. and I can speak from my experience of the times that I may have felt mm -hmm. on the receiving end of, of that so that I guess it could be a little bit more real to the uh, listeners. Yeah. So, and without going to the, the actual definitions of it, um, I will say that for me, it was a, reflection of my own self-esteem it's not even that I think that's a separate issue so this specific disorder speaks of um a fear that you don't love the person or whatever so if we're talking about that I haven't had that okay yeah so that's something different now in terms of having self esteem issue and wondering is this relationship going to last is this the one the person the one now I have had thoughts of that and that's just you know you've been in enough and you've witnessed enough relationships fail that you question everything is it especially I say in 2019, um, I see that there's a lot of skepticism when it comes to love. Yeah. Skepticism when it comes to, in particular, our community, black love. People question whether or not that's real, if it exists. Now, I think that what people are really questioning is whether perfection exists. And I don't know why they're questioning that, because it doesn't. So I don't know who told you wrong. Just because it looks good doesn't mean it's without its imperfections. So, but does love exist? Absolutely. And, but when you haven't experienced it for yourself, if you haven't witnessed it, I can't see where you can doubt the validity, validity of it when it does come along. So I think that's what kind of leads people down this, you know, is this person the one they're being too nice? Can I trust them? And they look for any little thing to cancel that person. I got you. I, so I guess I look at it and from the perspective of if, and especially dealing with our community, if you have not seen a lot of relationships and specifically marriages last and see the transitions of a marriage over time. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that you are used to, whether it's witnessing or being a part of is the infatuation phase of the marriage. And you don't know what that transition looks like to a deeper love a deeper understanding, uh, a friendship. And a lot of times I think when you do see those couples, because it's so unfamiliar to a person, mm -hmm. they may say, well, I don't want that. Because mm -hmm. from the outside looking in, I don't want uncles, Terry and aunt Jean marriage. Cause it doesn't look like, what I what makes me happy mm -hmm. in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times if we have not been around a, a long enough in a romantic relationship to see that infatuation phase fade, uh, fade and then move into a, a more mature love and relationship, then I think a lot of times that scares people. Mm -hmm. And when they do begin to get into those uncharted waters, 
the ROCD maybe can kick in then. Mm -hmm. And even we didn't touch on it yet, but triggers. So if you're in a relationship and those triggers are getting set off because of what you experienced in the past, then I could see ROCD showing up in um, wreaking havoc on the relationship. Yeah. And I think we, I don't even think we put a term on it. We just call that person crazy. Yeah. and But I, I think with ROCD, it doesn't always have to stem from a trigger, though. Sometimes it can be triggered. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that... Well, I'm going off of what the clinical... Us- so it's always a trigger? It didn't say... Always is saying that triggers usually kick it off. Yeah. I can see that. I mean, we all have triggers, so yeah. I understand it. But what I'm saying is there isn't always a reason for someone... Okay, yeah. ...being that way um so as as to not say well this person did this or they said that sometimes i think they may use that as a justification that's that doesn't lead you into becoming obsessive compulsive Mm -hmm. right and so i think it is just a understanding that you have to have with your spouse or your partner and having an open communication to where I feel comfortable enough to tell you the things that's on my mind. And if I hear what you're telling me and what you're telling me is not lining up with what I feel, what I'm doing or how I'm approaching a relationship, then hopefully I communicate that in a way that makes you feel more comfortable Mm -hmm. or at least it allows you the consideration of seeking counseling or seeking some type of professional help Mm -hmm. to, to help us get through these things. Because one thing that we know is that as you go through a relationship, sometimes you deal with things internally Mm -hmm. and your internal process of, a situation or the relationship may lead you to not share those feelings with the other partner, other partner, because you may think, well, I don't want to uh, have them think that I'm halfway out this relationship or halfway in. Mm -hmm. And then that keeps you in a space where a lot of times you only talk to people who are co-signing what you're saying Mm -hmm. and that's not really helping. And or you may just keep it to yourself and then you become passive aggressive and that's when outside help can be beneficial. So good discussion. We came across it and I thought it was an interesting topic. Um, Now, I mean, I really do sit and wonder, like, how many people have relationship OCD and it's not diagnosed? Yeah. And at the very least. You know it's a thing now. You mm-hmm. don't have to be a professional diagnoser of these things. Right. But being that you know it exists, if someone is coming to you or if you experience these symptoms, then you could at least say, hey, maybe you can research this. Yeah. And this isn't to take it and run with it and start diagnosing people in your lives and diagnosing yourself. Like, <laughs> this is not what this is. No. It's just to have information Information is powerful. Yeah, you need tools in your relationship, right. just like you need tools for everything else that you do. Right. So it's just to take a self-reflection. And if you see these things coming up in your life, especially if you've noticed it over past relationships that this has been a thing or some of these things that we've discussed have been an issue, then it's worth exploring. And we just wanted to share that with you all. Correct. And... There are counselors out there that's mm-hmm. spec- that specialize in our OCD. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure we sound like a broken record but about counseling, but we are firm believers in it. Do the work, people, because, you know, we want people to be in love, but we don't want you just to be in love. We want you to be healed and whole and in healthy. love and healthy in love. Because that's the only way it's going to survive and work, right? Correct. Okay. 
So we actually have a listener letter. We do. We do. That we wanted to bring to the audience because we, while we don't have experience or knowledge of this question in our marriage, correct? we have experienced it outside of marriage. During our engagement. During our engagement. But this is so nuanced that we wanted to bring it to you all. And if you have any answers for this listener, please feel free as always to respond. We're going to put a social media post out there and we'd love for you to give some advice to this listener. Let her know that um, she's not alone and that um, she's going to get through this. Yeah. Or feel free to uh, send us a direct message and we can forward it to that person. Absolutely. Absolutely. I am currently in a long distance marriage and I'm wondering if there are couples that have or are going through this. Since I'm six months pregnant, I feel it's harder this pregnancy compared to being pregnant with my son. So while we don't have, like we said, experience with the long distance marriage, we have been in a long distance relationship, but we didn't have the added layer of children and especially didn't have the added layer of having a child plus being married or plus being pregnant. So all we can do is speak to the long distance part. Um, I think you have to be intentional and very vocal about what you're comfortable dealing with. Yeah. You definitely want to have constant communication because things can change Yeah. in the blink of an eye. Like mm-hmm. from day to day, feelings can, can change. And even if you agree on something, mm-hmm. you could then, because we were planning on being engaged for a year mm-hmm. or roughly a year, like 11 months. Mm-hmm. And almost halfway through that process, maybe not even, we decided to bump up the wedding date mm-hmm. to, so that we could go ahead and get married so that we won't have to be long distance. Mm-hmm. Part of that was financial. Mm-hmm. Part of that was us just not wanting to have to be a- away from each other mm-hmm. uh, for that amount of time. So it's going to be different per uh, situation, right? Right. And so I don't want people to feel that, hey, I was honest, I was open, I gave them an opportunity to tell me how they feel. And just because you have that conversation once in a long distance situation, even like when you're living in a household with someone uh, on a day to day basis, feelings change, Mm -hmm. uh, thoughts change. So the long distance just kind of amplifies that. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to uh, check in. I guess that would be my advice. Just make sure that um, you're constantly having those conversations because it could be hard for someone who is on the side that I have changed my mind. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to bring this up because we made these decisions. We started to plan for this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other person may... They may have less flexibility, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, just so just continue to um, have those conversations and maybe not as specific as have you changed your mind, but we were intentional on communicating frequently. Yeah. And so in, in creating that space, we c- felt comfortable to talk about anything. Right. And so, I believe I came to you almost halfway through. I guess we were like three months at that point and we had everything like once we said, okay, we're going to do this. I was on it. I made sure that, you know, things were set in place as far as the venue and everything. And so really we just were waiting for the wedding date yeah. at that point. Yeah. Um, and I think it was, we were on the phone one night and I was, I was feeling tired and like missing you and I think you were feeling the same way and I said I didn't want to bring it up because I was like we already set this plan in motion so yeah um we said it was going to be almost a year so but I in that moment I felt compelled to say 
I'm feeling this way. Let me just see if he's open to it. So I said, hey, what do you think about moving up the wedding date to like January? And yeah. you said. Sure. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and I was like, that's it. That's all it took. So whatever reservations that you may be feeling or pressures that you may be feeling, don't feel that your spouse may not be feeling that. And if you have the conversation, you may find that it's easier than you thought. Yeah. So whatever you're feeling, whatever adjustments you want to make to make you comfortable, they may be feeling the same way and be open to it. Yeah. And I remember the story completely different. Really? Yeah. I, I, I remember it being like a balmy. What, what does balmy mean? Balmy? Like high. No, not balmy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a. Words mean things. It was a crisp. Crisp. Yet cool mm-hmm. October day. It was about October. I, in, in my mind, I remember that. Okay. And uh, I was living in the apartments, right? Mm-hmm. And so for some reason, oh, I think I had purchased this uh, washer and dryer mm-hmm. and the washer wasn't working. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I was going down. It was, I think, one day before work, I was going to the washer interior down mm-hmm. the road. And so in the process of washing and drying clothes, mm-hmm. I remember you asking me and me being like, sure. That's what I remember. I, oh. I always remember me washing clothes. I, I thought think, it was at. I thought it was in the morning. So in yeah. the morning. Yeah, because I was washing clothes in the morning. It must have been a Saturday then. It may have been. I don't know. I thought it was at night. Clearly, we don't know what we're talking about. I mean, we know it happened. We knew it <laughs> happened. We but, know the outcome. Hey, that was what eight years almost ago? years ago. Yeah, eight years ago almost. Yeah. So, but the thing was, we had already. Sp- Chose, well, you had selected the colors for the wedding. Mm-hmm. We had to change the colors because it, yeah. we, you know. it was going to be a summer wedding. Well, s- spring, summerish yeah. on the cusp. Yeah. So my colors were totally for that. Yeah. And my dress was for that. And us moving it, we were like, the only thing that really needs to change is his suit. Yeah. The and color. I wasn't tripping on it. You weren't tripping on it. No, I had to go from all uh, was it tan? No, to no, 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 brown? no. Because I told you to change the color to a chocolate, mm-hmm. and you said, "Nah, I-, I could do it. I could rock a tan." And I was like, "Oh yeah, I you mean, ain't rocking no tan." Yeah, I remember that. I wasn't tripping though. Like I, the suit that I had, the tux I had picked out was fly. So I wanted to. Yeah, thank I the to Lord for mother in laws because your mama got your mind right on that one. Hey, mama <laughs> made it. <laughs> I said, thank you, mother-in-law, because... Yeah, I don't even remember that part. Yeah, you were staunch that you weren't changing the colors. I said, if you don't take yourself... And I think the, the thing was, yeah, like, I wasn't tripping, but I don't think I want to go all the way back over there. Then I had to tell my homeboys to, mm-hmm. you know, I had to change all that. But at the end of the day, I wasn't tripping. She looking at me. Well, thank the Lord for mother-in-laws, like I said, that she convinced you <laughs> because apparently I wasn't getting through at that point. See, because the thing was, we were doing the wedding our way. Yeah. And I was telling you, it's our wedding, so I can wear whatever color I want. It ain't. It doesn't have to be a winter color, per se, if I wanted to wear... I had an idea, an aesthetic in my mind. Well, you know, for, right. for you and, and, you know, through my mama... It wasn't for me. Your mama said, hey. <laughs> it was for you. Like, okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> so hopefully we gave you a little bit of insight, what we could uh, based on our situation. And of course, we're praying for you too. We're rooting for you too. We wish you all the luck in the world on your marriage. So if anybody else has any advice for this couple, please feel free to provide it. Indeed, indeed. Indeed. Something else, we are going to have a guest speaker. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about the black male-female relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think that may be multi-part. 
not quite sure. We'll see what the response is from you guys. Yeah, we're going to start with her. Yeah, but we definitely want to uh, be intentional on helping shape a safe environment, a safe space for black men and women to have conversations, to be able to fresh, um, to share their frustrations, mm-hmm. share their desires, um, and so that we can have more healthy people out here representing black love Mm -hmm. and we don't have to just see it on tv and can i say and we'll get into it in that episode but i don't want us as people to get in the habit of venting our frustrations about the other sex and then throwing up our hands and being done with it Like, I really want us to get a point to where, okay, yes, I feel this way. How do you feel? And where can we find some common ground to where we can at least have a civilized conversation and a realistic conversation? Because for some reason, people are out here thinking that men should be one way and that women should be one way. And as it stands today, it's not that. So how can we come together in a respectful way and in a loving way to make love possible. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's it, man. I I teach these, you know, brown and black babies and they need (laughs) to see stability. They need to see safety. They need to see camaraderie and Mm -hmm. respect and love and peace Mm -hmm. and It doesn't always have to happen in a romantic relationship. Right. But just as brothers and sisters, uh, we should be able to engage and help and uplift one another just on a basic level. So we're going to dig into that. And hopefully it's met with curiosity and questions and uh, your feedback. Because we're definitely not authority on it, Mm -hmm. but we are part of it. So, right. Does that wrap this conversation up? Oh, one more announcement. We will be in Houston on September 13th through the 15th for the Love Remix Retreat hosted by Mocha Marriage. Yay. Pew, 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 pew. Definitely excited about that. Yes. They, it's almost booked. It may be booked now, but right. if you want to check, check out their Eventbrite. Um, you could Google. And we have it on our social media, so there's a link to it Definitely. if you're interested in attending. Would love to see you there mm-hmm. if you are going to be a part of that. Um, we look forward to seeing you in our session. Yes. Um, what so. are we doing? We're doing expectations and challenges with communication dealing with emotional intelligence yes definitely so does that wrap it up i think that wraps it up we can go all day but (laughs) so this has been another episode of the marital mission third season we are excited about the content that we are bringing to you ready to pray this thing out let's do it all right Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for delivering us from any bondage in our relationships, anything that has come to attack our our unions, our marriages, our friendships, the love that we have, the peace that we have. Lord, we pray against doubt and fear that overcomes our mind. Lord, we ask that you would give us the spirit of discernment, but not a spirit of failure. Lord, we ask that you would be with all of those right now that are struggling in their marriages, their relationships, uh, whatever it it may be, that you would meet them at that point and you would give them strength to come together, to communicate, to lean on you, to pray, Lord, and to do the work. Lord, we ask that you would just continue to uplift us and to allow us to speak truth to power. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. See you next episode.